Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Today, we are talking with our friends from Total Benefit Solutions, who are going to talk about hospitality, health insurance. If you're interested in getting some affordable options for your team, this is the webinar for you. Um, just a bit of housekeeping before we get started. We are recording this webinar, and we will have it up on our website later on this afternoon. If you are interested in the presentation slides, I'm going to ask you to email Logan Dozier. He uh, works with our insurance partners very closely, and he is. you can email him at logand at wahospitality.org. Um, also, if you have a question during the presentation, go ahead and type it in the Q&A section of your screen. It's down at the bottom, and we can answer those questions on air. Finally, next week, we have two webinars coming up. We have one with our friends from Tip House and one we have with Susan Sturholm from All Things HR. She is a member of our advisory network. And as members, you are entitled to a 30-minute consultation with any one of our advisors. And you just need to get a hold of your territory manager if you have any questions. And Susan will be talking about sexual harassment policies and making sure you have the right ones in place before you run into trouble. Uh, that's at 10 a.m. on Thursday. So same time, different day, but an extra webinar for you. Yay. All right. With that, I'm going to go ahead and hand this over to Logan. Good morning, Logan. Good morning, Lisa, and thank you very much. Um, as Lisa mentioned, my name is Logan Dozier, and I am our uh, Senior Manager of Insurance Services here at the Washington Hospitality Association. Uh, many of you have probably heard about our Hospitality Health Insurance Trust, uh, formerly also known as High hit um, this is a member-driven program. Everything we do here at the association uh, is member-driven. Our trustees are members, and we really do value uh, your feedback. We've got a lot of exciting news, I would say, that we've been working with uh, closely here with Mike and John and TBS uh, within the trust. And, um, and we look forward uh, to working with all of you, whether it's your first time looking at health insurance or ancillary products, or you have it in place and just want a comparison, I uh, strongly encourage you to get involved uh, in the trust and, and learn more about it. We are broker agnostic, meaning if you have a broker, great, come and uh, look at this program. If you don't, that's okay. We've got some trusted resources out there as well too. Uh, so with that, I don't want to steal too much thunder from my partners here. I'll kick it over to John and uh, let him take it away. Uh, good morning, and thank you, Logan, and uh, thank you to the Hospitality Health Insurance uh, Trust and to the Washington Has Hospitality Association. Uh, very excited to talk to you all this morning on this beautiful fall day here in Seattle. Uh, nice uh, Seattle sunshine out there. Um, if we can go ahead and switch the slides, please, guys. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, what the Health Insurance Trust has to offer to you as members of the association. And we'll go over some of the requirements, but we'll also go over some of the highlights of the plan. And I've got really three main goals for today. One is to give you a good idea of the benefits that are available to you as members or potential members of the trust, um, going over the plans, the insurance carriers, and the benefits that are available to purchase. Uh, two, I really hope to pique your interest and get your excitement to see why these benefits might be helpful for you as you try and attract and retain uh, good talent and employees for your companies. And then lastly, uh, this is the time of enrollments for health insurance. Um, the majority of people are out there shopping this time of year. And if you are out there, I really encourage you to talk to your broker and make sure you get a quote from us to see how competitive we are compared to what you currently have. Or if you're new and you're thinking about adding benefits, uh, maybe you want to start off with some ancillary benefits and work your way up as your business grows. Um, so we'll cover all of those things. But first of all, who's eligible? You have to be a member of WHA and uh, the trust to be eligible. Uh, we built this plan uh, really specifically for the unique needs of hospitality-based employers. Uh, there's a lot of folks out there that uh, start out with small small shops. So this plan is available to groups of two or more enrolled employees. Uh, everyone has to be in Washington. Uh, from the employer perspective, you can have divisions outside of Washington, but the headquarters needs to be right here in Washington State. Um, must have an active membership. 
And then, as I mentioned, we, we did some things that are really unique to the trust and different than you'd find in the ACA marketplace. Uh, traditionally, you have to, um, uh, as an employer, contribute 75% of the premium for the employee. And uh, most small employer plans require 75% of the employees to participate. Uh, with this trust product, we're able to allow uh, employers to participate with only 50% employee participation and only 50% employer contribution. Additionally, uh, unlike the traditional market, we're able to do management carve outs. So we find that's one of the most uh, attractive things that brings people to the, these plans as well. So we, we're excited that we have two great carriers from a medical perspective. Um, we have Kaiser Permanente, and with that portfolio of plans, there are 19 different plans that spread uh, a multitude of different ranges that cover low deductible, mid-range mid deductible, higher deductible, uh, HMOs, which is more of an integrated model, and then full-on PPOs, which gives you a little bit more freedom to choose. Uh, we added three new plans this year, and we took one away that just wasn't selling very much. So a really good uh, set of options for those of you who uh, would like to consider Kaiser and that um, suite of uh, products. We've been working really hard with the trust and with our employer groups to uh, manage the renewals. And we're really excited that the average renewal for our Kaiser members this year and their increase for new members coming on is a little bit under 6%. For Aetna, we have a great portfolio of products. It's a straight PPO plan, um, which means there is no uh, gatekeeper approach like you see in the HMO. We have 17 plans that range all different uh, types of, of coverages, and we have four really value-driven plans on the Aetna Limited Whole Health Network. These plans were built and designed to have a real value-forward approach. We understand and appreciate that hospitality um, there's, there's some real challenges these days with the cost of labor, especially in Seattle with what's going on with the total cost uh, initiative uh, that will um, be coming in in January and what that does to your ability to offer benefits. So we really tried to drive these plans in a lower premium uh, build, but still have some great first dollar coverage like co-pays for office visits and lower deductibles on, um, on like uh office visits, excuse me, and um, labs and x-rays, pardon me. So if you look at these renewals on our plans here, eight to 11% with Aetna versus 5.6% with Kaiser, uh, the state of Washington just issued the, the average for small groups in Washington state was 12.1, with the highest out there being regions for small employer plans going up 21.9%. Uh, so if you haven't shopped the HHI health plans in the past, or it's been a while, come take a look. The premiums are looking pretty attractive um, as it relates to the market. Hey, John. Yeah. The question that came in, um, when you have 80% part-time employees, how does this work for meeting the 50% rule? So it's of eligible employees. So that's where a carve out can come into play and we can car we can do a, a carve out to help meet those uh, eligibility requirements. Thank you. So both medical carriers, not, a, not only do they provide a great medical plan and benefits, but they also have some really unique uh, value add-ons. With Kaiser, they have a community resource hub. We all know that Seattle is a great place for people to move to. Um, but what happens when something happens unexpectedly and you don't know who to go to for a housing issue, a child care issue, um, a financial challenge? Well, with, through Kaiser, they have this community resource hub that helps connect people to those resources so they can get healthy, whether it's from a finance perspective, from a family perspective, or financially, and they can, um, they can move forward in their, in their health journey. Additionally, they also have some great tools to assist with mental health and physical health, whether it's the uh, free subscription to the Calm app, whether it's wellness coaching or discounted uh, access to gyms and gym memberships, a really good set of um, value-added approaches from Kaiser. 
They also have the Quit for Life that helps uh, with almost a 50% success rate for people who are struggling with tobacco and nicotine addiction. Uh, this is a super popular program that they've had for a number of years, and the almost 50% success rate, I think, speaks for itself. Aetna also has some really unique value add-ons. One is the OTCHS benefit. This allows members to get up to $25 in free over-the-counter um, uh, purchases at a CVS in-store or Target or online. Uh, they can do this up to four times a year. So $100 of free over-the-counter uh, meds from Aetna. And then Aetna also has a wellness program that really is about getting people active in their own wellness, getting them to start with a well-being assessment, then they help with a health report, kind of a baseline of where they are, and then give some suggested activities that can help push people in the right direction to start uh, getting healthy and making a positive impact on their own health. And it's the HHI benefit program is not just medical insurance. We recognize um, how expensive it can be to offer medical insurance. There are some great ancillary programs. We have two dental carriers with a, a great range of plans on Emeritus. It's a PPO, which means you can see any dentist you choose. Um, there's seven plans available. And with, with Lamet, there are two plans available. Well, Lamet has a really rich set of benefits um, and it's more of an HMO style. Both plans are available on a standalone basis. And then we have Emeritus Vision, which includes VSP and IMED or a no network option. And you can see adding vision um, coverage for, for people is going to be anywhere from like 5 to $12 per employee per month. On the dental side, you're looking anywhere from $40 to $55 per person per month. And then you have things like um, EAP, what happens when somebody has a, a family or a medical issue? Who do they go to to talk to? How do you find a, um, a therapist or a mental health provider? The EAP can be purchased on a standalone basis. Uh, Teladoc, this is a great entry into having some form of access to uh, health care, and the premium is below $3 per employee per month. I'll talk a little bit more about that on the next slide. And then life in AD&D &D coverage. A $10,000 or $25,000 uh, life insurance plan usually runs a couple of dollars per employee per month. And oftentimes, especially for younger folks, is their only life insurance. So if something tragic happens um, during those younger years, their family can at least take care of um, their burial and, and, and close out any of their additional uh, needs. I'm going to spend just a couple more minutes on the Teladoc because it is such a great way just to start getting into offering employee benefits and because it is so inexpensive for $265 per employee per month. They have access to um, a Teladoc, as it says, um, anywhere uh, they are. And for things like dermatology, for things like a sore throat, um, all types of things that can be done over the phone or over Zoom um, and really is a, an amazing resource for, for such a low cost. And once I'm backing up to the comm psych again, um, this really is a tool to help people in their times of need, whether it's a, a marital issue, a financial issue, um, a depression, depression issue. They get up to six sessions per issue and then hopefully are passed along to um, a resource where they can continue their care. And this is for $1.82 per employee per month. My hope is that you recognize that um, Offering employee benefits is not just about having the medical that can oftentimes cost four or five, six or seven hundred dollars a month per employee, but sometimes it's just about starting with something that can have a real impact on your employees, who are oftentimes your friends and your family and some of um, your businesses. So once again, as I started, I, I said we've got three main goals, and the first was just to give you an overview of what. Uh, benefits that you can get from the HHI that you really can't get anywhere else in the market. Two, I hope I piqued your interest a little bit to get you thinking about um, should you shop us against your current plans or should you think about adding one of these plans here? And then if so, who do you talk to? Um, Logan was really clear, we're broker agnostic. If you have a great broker that you've been working with for years, uh, reach out to them and say, hey, have you, have you looked at the HHI program uh, recently? 
And if you don't have a broker, we've got some great trusted advisor advisors we'd be happy to refer you to. We have another question, John. Excellent. We, can you briefly cover what constitutes an eligible employee for benefits for Washington? Typically, it's a full-time employee who's actively at work. All right, thank you. All right, if we have any questions, go ahead and type them down in the Q&A right now. Now's the time to ask. Um, John, what is typically the, the most common question you get when people call you for a quote? Typically, is what are other companies that are like us offer? So mm -hmm. if, if it's a restaurant and they've got seven employees and they've been in business for a couple of years, what do they typically offer? So they want to know how do they stack up against other light businesses uh, with similar sizes. What is considered full time in Washington State? Sure, the average, um, the, the typical amount is usually thirty hours, but there can be some variances to that. Okay. And when will the new rates be available for those of us renewing on January first? The renewals have all gone out. So if you haven't received them, that means that they've, they've been delivered to your broker and your broker is probably doing a spreadsheet and putting them into a different format to then prepare them for you. So call your broker and find out. Exactly. Okay. All right. We don't have any more questions. Um, do you have any? Oh, wait, one just came in. Is there a cap on premium increases based on your plans? There is no cap. However, um, uh, as I met, last year, I think uh, was was uh, just under fifteen percent. This year, we we were just under six percent on Kaiser, and um, not eight to eleven percent on Aetna. Uh, the year before that, I think it was um, it was the mid mid single digits. So on average, we've been below the um, the average renewal that the market has received. All right. Well, thank you so much, John. Uh, does Washington regulate that for premium increases? Washington does re regulate premium increases. How many lives do you have covered under high hit in Washington state? Um, there are over 2000. I can't tell you the specific amount. It's not something we, we typically share, but it's, it's well over 2000. And we keep to currently pay 90% of coverage. If we move down to 80%, will this impact our rates? It will not impact your rates. All right. Great questions. Yeah, and they're coming in quick too. And Got another just, one. Oh, oh, go ahead, okay. Logan. I was just gonna ask, John, if if someone joins the trust, um, say they're not ready for one one, say they wanna shop two one or three one or four one, how does that affect their renewal within the trust once they get on the program and everything? Yeah, so um, like most trusts in the state of Washington, we operate on a focal renewal, which means that all of the plans and the rates are set for a one one. If somebody comes on two one, then they would just renew again on one one. So they'd have a little bit less than a 12 month plan. But we have we have folks join all throughout the year. Thank you. What is the law that dictates the increase and what is the max increase? Uh, it's not a law. There, there are multiple laws that impact um, how health insurance is regulated. So it really is a little bit more complicated than just, um, it's not just one law. There, there, there are a number of, uh, of a piece of legislation that impact both from a federal perspective and from a local perspective. How many employees do you need to have to sign up? Two employees enrolled. All right. We can give it another minute to see if any more questions come in. Um, is there anything? Oh, go well, ahead. Logan. I was going to ask John, uh, you know, there's one uh, crucial part and that's the census that usually the broker uh, sends in. Can you give our members uh, maybe some insight into what they might expect if, if they're preparing that census and, and maybe what to uh, have the conversation with, with their employees so they can get them involved? 
That's a, that's a good question, Logan. Um, you know, the, the better information that's provided to your broker or your agent, the more accurate the, the quote will be and the more options they'll be able to put together for you. Uh, a typical census is going to have the employee um, age, address, um, and uh the, the demo, excuse me, um, and then their election status. So if they're coming on uh, as an individual or an employee with a spouse or an employee with a family. So it's what we call a member level census. Do you need a form to fill in for that census? We have a, a template and then uh, most of the brokers would, would have a template as well. The um, it's, it's a really common set of, of data that's required from just about any carrier or insurance uh, provider. Are we required to pay 50% of the premium as a minimum? That's correct. Okay. And, and just to restate one more time, you only need two employees, correct? <laughs> yes. And, and if, if the employer is over 10 employees, they can offer up to three different plans from the same medical carrier and they can fund 50% of the least expensive. So if they um, wanted to have a base plan that was just kind of an intro plan, something um, you know for the, the young and invincibles, um, they can do that, uh, but they don't have to provide 50% contribution for all of the plans, just for the lowest plan. And do you require everyone to complete a new form for the renewal enrollment? We typically do not. Uh, if they're not changing and they're staying on the same plans, we, uh, we can do that with just a form. Uh, if there's a bunch of change, we, we, we like to see that happen through uh, Excel with, with the broker helping uh, because it makes it for much cleaner. Uh, we can read it a lot easier and we can get it submitted uh, with, with fewer errors if it just comes through electronically in an Excel format. All right. Well, we don't have any more questions. Um, I would say if you do, go ahead and reach out to Logan and he can put you in touch with John and Mike. Um also, this will be up later on, probably this afternoon, about noonish, uh, up on our website at wahospitality.org. And if you would like a copy of the presentation, of course, reach out to Logan at logand at wahospitality.org. And with that, uh, thank you all very much. It's very, inform very informative. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank, thank you. you.